Hey friends, Eric again with Ham Radio Concepts. And in this video, I wanna educate you a little bit more and we're gonna go back to antenna tuners for ham radio. I bet you if you're watching this video, you probably have an antenna tuner set up on your desk or in your go kit or wherever. But I've been called out by a couple people that say, Eric, you keep saying you don't use an antenna tuner. What makes you so special? Why do I have one and you're not using one? Well, I actually do have one. If you remember, I've done a video on this and several other ones. This is, for example, an MFJ auto tuner, the 993B, and it's brand new in the box. I had a few of these. I used the ones in videos. I got rid of the ones I didn't need, and I kept one tucked away in the closet brand new. But why am I not using it? I make contacts every day on HF without an antenna tuner. But I want everybody to understand, if you haven't figured this out or can't get the right information online elsewhere, come here and check out that this is not tuning your antenna. This is an antenna tuner. What? Let me explain. Let me just make a contact real quick. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Hey, very good. I think I am uh, uh, 1 Alpha uh, Florida, Foxtrot Lima, Roger. Roger, one hotel. Well, you're the first and only contact on Winter Field Day, and I got it on video. So thanks, man. 7-3. Well, thanks, Eric. And uh, personal call is November 4, Alpha Romeo Yankee. November 4, Alpha Romeo Yankee. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck in the contest, 7-3. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Thanks, Eric. We'll take it all, man. All right, so what just happened? The bands are dead. Remember, no point of turning your radio on. The bands are dead. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you for an example first with the built-in antenna tuner in the radio. Now, I have my MFJ SWR power meter up here. And what I have here is I'm using my high-gain AV680. That's a nine-band vertical, and it is resonant on 6 meters, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, and 80 slash 75, depending on where you tune that last band. And it's come to my attention that a lot of people didn't realize my antenna that I've used the last couple years that I've told everybody, they didn't realize that that was a nine band antenna. They thought it was an antenna that I'm tuning up, but no, it's resonant where I want it to be in each band by how I tune it. Mostly it's broadbanded. It'll go mostly from one end of the band to the other with very minimal SWR change. But uh, when you're talking about 80 or 75, it's really narrow where you need it to be. If you want to talk on 3.580, or that's where the digital portion is, then you want to go up to 3.943, well, you're going to have to retune at the top of the antenna to make it resonant. So anyways, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I have this set to SWR right here, and I'm going to take the tuner off, and I'm going to be on FM at 100 watts. Now that says, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, that's looking pretty flat, okay? So, at the same time, if you look at that, look up here at the SWR, the forward and reflected power. Forward is uh, 105 watts, reflected is less than a half a watt. My SWR is 1.14 to 1. That is no tuner. That is directly into the antenna where it is. Now, I'm going to go to another band. I'm going to go to, for instance... Uh, we will go to 40 meters, and I'm going to go up to the top part of the band, all right? Now, let's go right there, all right? Tuner's off. I'm just going to transmit, and my SWR, if you look at it, is a little bit high on the screen. Check it out, all right? It's not, not, not really perfect. And if you look at the meter above my radio, you'll see my forward, 51 watts. I have 8 watts reflected. Okay, my SWR is 2.42 to 1. Watch this. I just hit the auto tuner in my radio, and if you watch right here on the SWR again, now it looks a lot lower, doesn't it? What changed up here? Nothing. I still have almost 20 watts reflected, 2.5 to 1 SWR. That's weird. Let me tune again. Now it really looks flat there on the SWR, doesn't it? I still have a 2.6 to 1. That's not doing anything to tune my antenna. All it's doing is providing a match 
from the coax and my antenna to the back of the radio. It's just making the radio happy is all it's doing. Now, I can continue to transmit KJ4 YZI testing. I could still transmit with that safely. My radio will be happy because the tuner inside is taking up the needed capacitance and inductance in order to make that match so the PA section is happy. But my antenna is still not really that good at that part of 40 meters. Usable, yes. A lot of people get wrapped up and it's got to be one-to-one -one SWR. It's a 3.5 right now, okay? And it's raining, so maybe I have, uh, maybe that's got something to do with it also. But if I go lower on the 40 meter band, I know that it's more resonant down there. So a little bit of a, a tuning issue there. But we're going to go here. I'll go to 10 meters just to show you again. Now I'll take the tuner off and we're just going to transmit down flat. You can see both on my radio, KJ4, YZI. You can see on my radio, there's nothing on the SWR, and I have a 1.17 half a watt reflected. That's not bad, right? Let's go up to the FM portion, somewhere up here. And you can see my SWR came up a little bit, and now I have almost 9 watts reflected. 1.96 to 1. Still get 92 watts out, only 9 watts reflected. That's still usable. But watch. We hit the tuner. You can see now the SWR is flat on my radio, but look, I still have 10 watts reflected coming down. It did not tune my antenna. Now, let's go further, and I'm going to use this auto tuner, and I'm going to load up my antenna on 160 meters. The antenna is nowhere near long enough or resonant for 160, but the auto tuner will do it. But we're going to see what it looks like on my reflected power. And you'll be surprised that your tuner is tuning that wire, but if you're a 50 to one SWR, you're doing yourself no good. A resonant antenna will always be better than a random length, a random antenna with a tuner on it. All you're doing is smoke and mirrors to your PA section. You're not tuning your antenna at all. I didn't even want to open this. Kind of keep it like a keepsake, but I guess now it's justified as a good video. So I'll unbox it. And maybe after, I'll post it on the internet for sale. Who knows? All right, perfect example right here. So what I have is, I have my ICOM 7300 goes into the tuner, and then it comes into the SWR power meter, then it goes to my antenna. Now, again, this, an this antenna tuner will tune a wet noodle. I'm not even kidding. I have my radio set to 50 watts, 50% 50 power. And I hit the button, it tuned, but I want to show you something. Ready? I'm going to key up on FM. Here, let me make it official. KJ4YZI. Look. Zero SWR here. 50 watts, zero reflected, 1.0 to 1. After the tuner, 49 watts reflected. Almost all my power is being reflected. 50 watts is coming back. It's not even resonant at all. For some reason, this says 106 watts forward. I guess that's calculating it, but it's way out of whack. Now, I could key up and talk into this thing all day long. I guarantee nobody's hearing me. Um, you know, that's that's just bizarre that it's uh, 50 watts forward. You know, my SWR, oh, I'm flat. Here's, here's what everybody says. My antenna's tuned flat with my tuner. No, it's not. Your radio thinks it's happy, but your antenna sucks. That's pretty much what that boils down to, unless you're using an antenna that's not cut for that band. But if you're just using a piece of wire out there, more power to you to throw a wire and tune it if you, that's all you have for money or that's all you have for property. But if you're using an antenna that's not even designed for that band, but you think it's efficient, it's not. It's not, I have 50 watts reflected. I'm losing every bit of the power I'm putting into that thing. Let's go here, let's go to uh, 20 meters, this thing should um, should tune. Okay, so let me just help it out here. Um, it's got memories in it. See, it tuned. Okay, 56, 58 watts, zero reflected, 1.0 SWR, and that's about what I have over here, 50 watts. That's resonant. I don't need the tuner. Now it's just, to use a tuner 
To go from a 1.13 to a 1.1 is a waste of your money and time and space on the desk. You don't have to have a very perfect SWR. But you can see right here that even though the tuner says it's perfect, your radio's happy, you have a tw two tenths of a watt coming back. No big deal. Let's go to, um, uh, let's go to 80 meters or 75 right there. And, um, okay, so right there you can see I have an infinite SWR there, right? It's not, I guess I don't have this in auto mode. Okay, so right there. Now we have a 1.4 to 1. My radio seems a lot happier over here, okay? But look, <laughs> look at the erratic numbers here because it's not nowhere near resonant there because I have it resonant down towards the bottom of the band, like 3.85 or 3.580. Um, so this may be all good and dandy here. I'll make it even better than a 1.4. There you go. Half a watt reflected, it says. But over here, I have some erratic numbers because it's way out of tune. So your radio's happy, but that thing is not tuning your antenna at all. Let's try one more. Let's go to six meters. Now let's see, we'll go to the FM. KJ4YZI. Okay, so this thing's not tuning automatically. Unless I do that, okay. So right now, I have uh, 50 watts forward, only a 1.2 watts reflected. And this over here is saying I have three watts reflected. So not really needed. I could pick that up with my internal tuner. Um, and also I have that on, I gotta turn it off. There we go, it's more like it. And we'll tune that again. All right, so that's, that's making it, you know, making the radio happy. Although you can see that without this tuner, let's try this. Alright, my SWR is only a 1.7 to 1, and that's not bad. So I just hit the button for the tuner, and just clean it up so that the radio is a little bit happier. But a 1.7 to 1 is absolutely just fine. But right now, you can see, KJ4 YZI, there's no reflected power into the radio, but there's only a few watts coming back. Um, I am at 100 watts there, so... 92 watts forward, six you know return lot or six return watts, not a big deal. But the moral of the story is this: uh, if you are having trouble and you're using just a random fence post or a piece of wire or whatever, understand that you can make the thing tune with a tuner so that your radio is happy. But that does not mean you're having a good antenna, and that may be the problem with your bands or dead statements or you're not able to make contacts because you're loading up a light bulb and it says it's tuned, but every bit of your power is just getting radiated and reflected back into the tuner. So that's uh, hopefully understand, you know, a lot of people understand what I'm trying to say here. Now there is one more thing to this and I'll show you this right now. The difference would be something like this. Now this is a pocket loop tuner and you may have seen MFJ magnetic loops or Alex loop or uh, all kinds of loops. The difference is this, this is a matchbox. And what this is actually doing is changing, if you put a loop on this thing from one to the other, it's actually changing the size of the loop with the tuning. This is actually changing your antenna characteristics. This isn't gonna go in line. This is for making a loop antenna on your, uh, on your bench outside or, or on your driveway or field day or QRP or wherever. This is, you could throw a piece of wire around in a loop or lay it on a bookshelf or whatever, and you're actually adjusting the antenna itself. You're not tricking the radio. You're matching the antenna to the radio this way. The same thing for an MFJ magnetic loop antenna. There's a capacitor inside that thing. And as you tune, the capacitor's moving to uh, theoretically, or you know, the way it seems, it's you know, making smaller and bigger that loop uh, electrically. So it is actually changing the size of that loop. And that's why when you're using something like this or a, a, um, a loop antenna, you can't go everywhere with it. You tune this on the frequency you're on and that's it. If you want to move frequencies, you got to retune the whole thing. If you want to move from one end of the band to the other, you got to retune because it's actually 
adjusting the size of the antenna. Whereas this here is just tricking your radio to think that your antenna is resonant. It is not doing anything to your antenna at all. So I hope that was a educational video for you, not to go on too long, but to, to just teach you that when your buddy says, throw a wire out there and tune it up, but you have the ability of buying a resonant multiband antenna, that would be your best ticket. And also, uh, a piece of wire is only going to be resonant one or two places. A 20 meter dipole is resonant on 20 meters. It may be resonant and 10 with a harmonic, but it's not going to be resonant 15, 17, 12, 6. It's going to be resonant one place that you cut it for per frequency, per length. The rest is up to you to use a tuner to mask your radio and make it happy. Or you could use a fan dipole, you could use a multi-band high gain like I have, Cushcraft, a gap antenna. Um, all those have traps and radiators on them that are making it resonant each band that the antenna is built for. Leave your comments below. I'll probably get some hate mail. But anyways, thanks for watching. 73 KJ4YZI.